All right, goodness, that's loading. And we're live. I can see the comments there. And, oh yeah, notifications are on. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I'm gonna share. page. Now bear with me guys. Can you share nowhere else? Let's see, it's on my page, I hope. Amen. It is. It is. I'm just getting ready to get, ready to get started. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to put some stuff in order. Once I do this, then we're good. So we have seen. Anyway. Hello, everybody. Hi, how are you? Hello, hello. How are y'all doing this evening? It's a good, this is another day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's almost 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I'm Reverend Dr. Antonio Arnold. It's my beautiful wife, Sheila Arnold. Hello. <laughs> and we're going to discuss a few topics on about God's Word. And one in particular that we should talk about is children. The importance of children in honoring their mother and father. See how? Okay. Did you already turn it down? Okay. The honor and okay, where was I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Discussing <laughs> technology. I love technology. Um, the very principle how God uh, want our children and us being adult children to honor our mother and father, and that I believe that is so important because uh, I believe that there's a, in my opinion, with, as we discuss this and through Scripture, how there is such a lacking of respect. Not only to mothers and fathers, to grandmothers and grandfathers, to great grandmothers and great grandfathers, and beyond, by our by the actions of what we do, and God's word reminds us of this, and this is very important that we should honor our mother and father, so our life will be long. Mm -hmm. So to prove to to understand that, we're going to take it to God's word and let you hear what God had to say. We'll talk about it, and that you and then you can make the decision. How to, as a Christian, in applying God's word into your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, Jehovah, we come before you once again to say thank you for another day. This, this, and this beautiful waking hour, uh, seven, almost 7 p.m. And we're just going to rejoice in it, Lord. We're going to just give you thanks and honor and praise for the opportunity to share with your people your words in regards to honoring how our children, how children should honor their fathers and mothers. And Lord, we just need a great awakening on these souls today that they should receive the Holy Spirit in recognizing that the, you want us to honor our mother and father. We Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for all for all those who would come. To hear what the Spirit has to say. We thank you, Lord, for all those who are near and far, listening on the road, and listening on their cell phone, listening on their computer and laptop. We just thank you, Lord God, for all these blessings. And we ask your blessing upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You want to start it off, honey, about the topic <clears throat> and why we should uh, 
honor our mother and father? Okay, because one thing the Bible says that we should honor, uh, most importantly, the Bible says that we should honor our mother and father. And that means that we should respect our parents, obey and love them wholeheartedly. Uh, the Bible says, honor your mother and father and your days will be longer. Mm -hmm. So this is a very uh, important commandment that God has given us. Yes. Uh, until, until Deuteronomy 5, 16, it says, honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you. Yes. That your days may be long and it may be well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very important. That command. <coughs> yes, it is. Because we got to teach our children to honor. We have to, in the other words, the honor, we have to do something that's worth honorable. We got to raise our child the way they should go in the way that God sees the fit. We have to be honorable ourselves in our actions. That doesn't mean that you be a criminal, you honor you, you be a criminal or a, a, a murderer con or someone who's constantly living in sin. Regardless of that fact, the child shall honor their mother, have respect for them, because the one they're the ones who are raising you. Mm -hmm. There should no child, and no child, whether as long as your parents are alive, should disrespect their parents. They should never disrespect their grandparents. They should never disrespect their great grandparents. This is law. This is God's law in Ten Commandments. This is a commandment, not a suggestion. Even Jesus Christ reinforced it. That we should honor our mother and father. Yes. And if we can do that, we, the, our life will not only be more prosperous, but as the words say, we will live a longer life. And you know, like everything that we all say, what goes around comes around, because we're going to be the one on the other end. As our children grow older, we're gonna, they, we, they're going to have to honor us as well. It's Bible teaching. Mm -hmm. It's basic Bible teaching. Uh, I want to read a scripture. I'm not going to be too long. I see Ephesians sticking out, but I want to read Exodus. You already read what scripture she earlier? I just want to. Read. Read Deuteronomy you read five, Deuteronomy five six. It really I mean, for reinforced Exodus chapter twenty verse twelve. If you have your Bible, turn to Exodus chapter twenty verse twelve. It's a very important piece of scripture. Ask Deuteronomy reinforce this scripture okay and it says honor thy mother and thy thy father and thy mother sorry about that now, it's father first mother second that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee God gave us a land he gave us the ability to walk on earth he gave us life and all we had to do is be respectful to his commandments. And that one particular commandment is very important to God because he knows, because he's a father himself. He want, he expects us to honor our parents. Mm -hmm. He really do. I don't know where we have, where the, United, where the world has changed. And I say specifically in the United States because that's where I'm from. I'm from Virginia. I have seen in my own eyes where the children as adults and young children, two-year-olds, do not respect and honor their parents. I wonder where that comes from. What's it? Why did how the children get into the position where they no longer honor their mother and father? What caused this? Where did they get these ideas from where they can talk back to their mother in a disrespectful way? Where they can know they can get away with it? They learned it from somewhere outside the home, I believe. I believe so too. I believe number one it from school. Mm -hmm. Because the teacher tell them you can tell them your parents they got the kids to almost eight hours a day where you get most of their behaviors from. Mm -hmm. I also understand they got it from watching television shows. TV shows, yeah. So television television show when they show the kids rule. You see it on Burger King commercials back in the nineties. Talking about kids rule. Kids don't rule. Yeah. Parents rule. And the parents are the ones who's providing the clothing, the food, the shelter, the medical care. They're providing that child with every substance they need. That child doesn't have to worry about nothing. That child, as they grow up, should honor whatever that mother and father asked that child to do. That child should not even hesitate 
to do it. Why? Because when they couldn't walk, their parents were doing all the walking. When they couldn't talk, the parents were doing all the teaching. When they couldn't even feed themselves, mom and dad was feeding them. Mm -hmm. yes. So we got to get back to basics, guys. We got, brothers and sisters, we got to go back to what the Bible says. We got to get back to God's word. We're in a point now we don't even teach God's word. That's why we look at our country and see kids on the street causing havoc and mischiefs. And you ask yourself why they're doing it. All you have to do is look no further than the rejection of Jesus Christ. Because yeah. when society rejects the word of God and the covenant there is, then what you have, you got a world in chaos. You got hatred. You got, uh, that's another word I wanted to use, but I can't, mayhem. You got totally disrespect for authority. You got, if you got disrespect for your parents, you're not going to respect authority, which is going to cause you more problems. But that's why it's important. I respect my father ever from the time I was able to understand Till I was became a uh, past adult, till he died, I honored my father. I looked to him as my father, as my authority figure, because he's my father, and whatever he says is law to me. Mm -hmm. He taught me the Bible. He taught me about being respectful to uh, other people, my teachers, my principals, uh, the people I work for. I have to. If you want a, a long life, you have to submit. And be respectful to authority. You have to be respectful to your parents. You have to be respectful to your grandparents and your great grandparents. God willing, they're still here. Mm -hmm. You got another scripture you want to share, honey? Yeah. Or you have another um, statement? Ephesians 6. Uh, Ephesians 6. Uh, with, with verse. I will do uh, from 6 1 to 4. Amen. It don't have to be that long. I'm right here on it. Go. You want me to read or you going to discuss it? Or? Children, obey your parents in the mm -hmm. Lord, for this is right. Mm -hmm. Honor that father and mother, which is the first commandment, with yes. promise that it may be well with thee and thou may live long on the earth. Yes. Say that go again in, in, in the New Testament. I'm going to highlight that. <coughs> that That's important. That long on earth that you honor your mother and father. Now, some things that pop up in my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hit these points. Uh, honor your father and mother's needs to you parents should demand respect from their children for the preparation of teaching them to respect God. That's uh, right. And if a child does not respect their parents, they do not respect God. That's exactly right. Um, in Ephesians, um, it's not Ephesians, in, um, I think it's Exodus 21, mm -hmm. 15. Let's go there. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to do that to you. Exodus. 21? Mm-hmm. 21, 15, and then Exodus 15, and then 17. Amen. I'm going right through the Holy Bible. Set apart. It's God's Word. Exodus 15, you say? Uh-huh. Oh, man, I'm going all the way up to the tent. got excited. We went all the way up further. <laughs> that greedy. That's all right. God's word is always good for me. All right, 15. What verse? Uh, actually, 21, 15. Oh, 21, 15. I got it reversed. I was, on, I was already on 21. All right. Uh, all right. I'm on 21, 15 okay. now. Let me read it. And he that smited his father and or his mother shall be surely put to death. And then it said, uh, 17, what 17 said? And he that cursed his father and mother shall surely be put to death. Y'all see it? Did you just hear how serious this is? How God look at when, child, when a child disrespect their parents. Mm -hmm. Even in the word of God. If you hit your or smack your father or mother... You surely be put to death. Now that mindset, that was a mind that you really going to put this kind of child out of this misery. And that's how it was. When you have a disrespecting child, 
back in them days, they will put them to death, surely. <laughs> but in the new, in New Testament, in the new, in this earth age, it's total self. The other, the, the death that is worse than being put to death physically Separate. is spiritual death. Spiritual death, yes. Totally separation from the Father Jehovah and Jesus Christ. That is the worst death that could be opposed to a person. And this part here that curses his mother and father shall surely be put to death. That's total separation. Child should be never cursed out their mother and father. I don't care what you agree or disagree. If your father and mother tell you to clean up your room or you can't go to the football games or you can't get on your iPhone, you take your iPhone away from you, you take your tablet privileges away from you, you don't go on, uh, or go ransack the house, breaking everything up, breaking glass windows, destroying carpet, destroying furniture, and cussing disrespect and cursing, actually cursing at your mother and father, throwing rocks at them, throwing stuff at them. You surely going to be put away from God. God don't want nothing to do with you when you do that. That's total separation. That is the worst death that is going to come upon a person. And if you do such things, the Bible makes it clear you'll be put to death. Go to uh, Proverbs 19, 18. Proverbs 19, 18. <laughs> Going to the wisdom of King Solomon, one of the greatest kings known to unto the land. That Proverbs, what's that again, huh? 19, verse 18. 19, verse 18. This is some good stuff. Okay, 19. I'm going 18 right now. And this is good. This is very good eating. I'm ready when you are. Okay, go ahead. It's in chasing the thy son while there is hope. And let not thy soul spare for his crime. Okay, that will stop right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what does that word chasing mean? It means to discipline him. Exactly. It means not only to discipline, it means to correct them. And that's what that word of God does for it. It corrects our action. Some people make the excuse that don't judge me. You have to be judged righteously. And you have to be corrected according to God's word. A job of the pastor to correct the flock and the congregation. The job of a bishop is also to correct that congregation. The job of a parent is to correct their own child. Yes. Why are we allowing the government to brainwash you and put you and correct you? In a way that leads you away from God. The parents have the right to correct you, not the government. But also, I wanted to say in the, on the theme of chasing, I just lost my train of thought. That's enough. That's enough. Okay. Sweet. But the word of God, because you go to Hebrew chapter 11, it'll let you know that God's word corrects us too. For correction, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Then the first thing they say, for correction in righteousness. All right, honey. Mm -hmm. You go ahead. All right. Go to my notes here. The, now back to Ephesians, the key points I wanted to emphasize too on Ephesians, why we're talking about this when they talk about our children. Chief first once makes it plain. When God said, children, obey your parent in the Lord, the last thing they said was, for it is right. It is the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do, parents. If you're not chastening, chastening, and chastising your kids, if you're not correcting them, then you're not doing the right thing. Do the right thing and raise your child in the way they should go. Children, teach your children to obey the pair of you as a parent because it is right. It is by the Lord. It's in the Lord. He wants us to do it. He created us to, re to reproduce and have children and be a family. 
And he also teaches us that we have to have some responsibilities, not just as parents, but children too, because you got to teach them, the, you got to train them. Mm -hmm. You got to train them, not television, not the television. So sometimes you got to forsake an extra income. on that. That means you got to, what did they say? They say two parents working. You need two parents. You need really one parent to work when you raise the other child, raise your child. That means you got to get a very good job and let somebody be the stay-at-home parent, let like this particular mom, and I may be called a male showman this pig for this one. But this, it's about the Bible, what the Bible says. Because if the parent's not home all the time raising that child, then that child will depend on television to raise or whoever they see raise them. And they'll get all their thoughts from based on the environment around them. And that's a fact. That is a fact. That's scientifically proven. Sociologically proven. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a socialist of any form. But if God put this stuff together for our good, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Now, and also, honor thy father and mother. <coughs> that comes to mind. I'm going to hit these two parts and I'll be done. Okay. It's First of all, it's a commandment of promise. Yeah. It's not a request. It's not like, oh, could you do it, please? No, I'm telling you to do it. God is telling us to do it. It's a commandment. It's just like when in the army, when my commander gives me a command to move, I have to move. I have to do what my commander says. If, uh, if I was an enlisted soldier, my first sergeant gave me a command, or my drill sergeant gave me a command, I have to give the command. He gives the command execution. I have to initiate that command. Last, verse 3, that it may be well indeed that thou mayest live long, and instead emphasize live long mm -hmm. on the earth. If you want a long life, and you want life more abundantly, and I'll just add that to it. Yeah. If you want a long life, respect and honor your mother and father. Honor God first. Yeah. Respect the Lord and honor your mother and father. That's very important that you do that. All right. Chastisement, but chastisement means is the process that which God provides a substitute to bear our sins, brings men to put their trust in him, mm -hmm. train those whom he has received till they reach puberty, maturity. maturity. Mm -hmm. So chastising is, we train, when we chastise our children, we're training them. That's exactly right. That's what my teachers do all the time. Yeah. My teachers, my professors, I'll give you an F, or they grade me according to my works. So they make corrections. Right from wrong. Right. What so is right and what's wrong. Yep. When they get, when they mature, mature get, get to an older age, they understand um, themselves. Um, and they'll be better parents themselves, too. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. And that's what God wants us to do. Life doesn't have to be hard. Life doesn't have to be difficult. Life doesn't have to be miserable. All you have to do is obey the word of God. Honor the, uh, the one of the commandments, again, is honor thy father and mother for your life to be long. Yeah. And when we um, appease our children and um, don't correct them, they, they, they does not do them any justice. They really don't. Because when they go out in the world all alone, they think um, what they did at home is okay because they were taught by their parents that I can do anything I want to do and it's okay, okay and I won't get... Uh, are punished for. There's consequences for every action. There is consequences. Consequences for the parents who failed to teach their children. Consequences to the child growing up, whether it's grand grandchild, great grandchild, or this child, or their niece and nephew. If you have a mindset where you don't have to respect or honor, then you bring in a <coughs> ton of bricks upon yourself. And I just use it like say it like that. Mm -hmm. Like I said again, we should demand, um, parents should demand respect from their children. Don't mm -hmm. let the children talk to them in any kind of way, in a non-respectful way. I'm not going to tolerate it. But like, this, like I said, it was preparing them to respect God. And they're going to be parents too. And if you don't respect God... It is right to, in the Lord. Mm -hmm. You want a long life. Because if they not 
If they're not respecting their parents, they're not respecting God. And they're not going to respect the authority. Because the, the Bible says either. for us to honor our mother and father. Yep. That's one of his commandments and, and with a promise. Yeah. So, so if you're not respecting your children, your your parents, you're not respecting God. That Amen. is one of the commandments that God has put in it, uh, in the Ten Commandments, to honor your mother and father. And, we, and it said, this is the first commandment with a promise. That's right. That it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Exactly. Because you, you don't respect your parents and uh, anything can happen. You go out in this evil world, um, your life could be shortened. Mm -hmm. Because you're not, nobody you're, care about you're, you. you're, you're, you're not doing things that are uh, respectable. You go out here and um, get in trouble. And I just want to say something else too. If your parent, if you are a parent, and you allow your child to disrespect you, you are dishonoring your parents. Because your parents trained you better. Right. And you not respect, and you're a Christian, then you definitely need to be in the Word. If you're not in the Word, and I encourage you to get into the Word of God. If you're not being taught the Bible as we're sharing it with you, you go somewhere and get taught. The Bible, word on word, verse on verse. No hoop, no holler, no entertainment, but straight teaching. That's what you need. <coughs> and I think a lot of people need that more than ever. Now, everybody wants, don't want that hip and holler stuff. That stuff's not getting anywhere anymore. But I'll tell you something. A lot of folks are having their life cut short because of the, they failed to honor their mother and father. Because they'll take it out on the street and, they, and just be disrespectful to the wrong person, and that wrong person may be the one that may not going to be for no good. And just plain, I'm just speaking it plain. It's mm -hmm. tough out here. I lived it. My wife lived it. We raised children to the best of our ability. And I'm telling the two parents, I understand where you're coming from. Because no matter what, sometimes we can teach the very best to our children, and they don't take heed to teaching. Yes. And that's understandable. But if they want that, the Bible makes it clear. It's in their hands from that point. You do your part, the blood is in their hands once they walk out of that nest. Once they come out there and, and figure they can do whatever, then that's between them and their destiny. Mm -hmm. It's not your fault. If you've done everything you, you're supposed to do, according to God's will, if you've done, tried, done your best to teach your child right from wrong, to be respectful, and you hold them accountable, and they still come out there to be commit evil, then they will face the consequences which is in the Word of God. That is in the Word of God. Period. No holding back. I want to read Matthew also, Matthew 15, mm -hmm. verse 3 and 6. And then, you're going to, then I'll expound on it. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 3 to 6, it said, But he answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? Mm -hmm. For God commanded it, saying, Honor thy mother and father, and he that curses his mother and father, let him die the death. But he ye, he ye say, Whosoever shall say to his mother and father, It is a gift, by whatsoever the mightiest be profited by me. And verse 6, and honor, and honor not his father and mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made commandment of God of non effects by your tradition. What does that mean, brothers and sisters? With that, what Jesus is basically saying, just like a child is supposed to honor their mother and father, you're still supposed to honor God. We go right back to God. And if you dishonor God by your worldly traditions, your religious traditions, you just against the word of God, your other tradition of man and federal governments, as the word of God will set you free, and that will be made God, of the commandment of God, of non effect by your tradition. It has no effect because you don't believe in it. It, it has no effect upon you how you govern your country. It has no effect upon you because you totally disregard God's commandment. So it doesn't mean anything to you. 
Only itself is, and, and Jesus was dealing with those Pharisees. But we're living in a world that, that is no different. People are still selfish. People are, have a heart and heart. The government and all those scholars have a negative attitude towards righteousness. And we're here to tell you, we are living in a time that God's patience is over. You're going to see a lot more. But God will honor those who honor him. He expects us to honor him. He gave us the lesson that early in his commandment, honor thy father and mother, for your life shall be long. we got to do it, brothers and sisters. I honor my mother and father to the end. My wife honor her mother and father to the end. And we expect the same thing from our children and our grandchildren. No negotiation. Anything else? Yeah, Romans eight fourteen says, "Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God." So we have to be led by the Spirit of God. Not by our own thinking. By not, not by our own. Yes. Not by My our own, spirit. The Spirit of God. We're talking about the Spirit of, that comes from the Word of God, not what comes from your head. Obeying God's command through the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Yes. And we get the Holy Spirit in here. We have to learn the Word. We got to learn. This is the Spirit. His Word is the Spirit. The Word is the Spirit. Not slain, not speaking and all this other stuff, but this. This is it. So you want to talk about the Holy Spirit? Boom. You want to talk about want to do the Holy Spirit? Boom. Ain't got nothing to do with this dancing, prancing, and but all this other mockery that they come up with. It, it just it's, it just don't make sense. It is not God's word. And if you don't have anything, if you don't have an interpreter, don't say anything. Speak in your head. That's what, this, that's what tongue is. That's what makes it unknown. In your head, you're having a conversation while you open your mouth. That's tongue. You want to speak language? Then you speak either Greek, Hebrew, Arabic, Arabic. The language that was listed in the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. That's the language that many people speak in that time. Stop making stuff up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll do a topic on that later on. But anyway, praise God. We pray that you have an understanding of what God expects us to do. He expects us to honor our mother and father. And I'm talking to all our young people as well, and our young at heart, and our children and grandchildren. Honor your mother and father, for your life will be long. Honor your mother. That means to respect. respect. In the Lord. In the Lord, that means that respect goes all the way up to him too. So we got to do it, brother and sister. Any because last final words? Because when you respect your mother and father, you're respecting God. Amen. Anyway, we pray this. We don't plan to be out here long. We just want to say a few words. And one of the topics that we that God has shared with us is the honor. If you smack your mama, there'll be a consequence for that. If you disrespect your mother and dad, there'll be a consequence for that. If you curse at them verbally, there'll be a consequence for that. God put, you got parents to correct you. That what chastisement comes into play. I was chastised till I was old enough, when I was old enough to know right from wrong. Every last one of us was chastised. If somebody tells you you can't chastise, correct a child, you leave them the heck alone. They are dangerous. Leave them alone. Child, as the government said, then you need to speak up a little bit more and let, let your congressman know that we're not taking this. That's for real. Anyway. God bless you. This is that. This is Reverend Dr. Antonio Arnold and my beautiful wife Sheila on this topic of honoring the mother and father. May God bless you. We pray that this reading of this word would be a blessing to you. That you reason that, that what we are reasoning to you makes sense. May God have a smile upon you. Peace. Good night. Good night. <laughs>